Let's talk about hyphenation for a second. Now we're going to talk about the mechanics of the dash in a moment and the hyphen. But let's just begin with compound words can be written as. So if you have words that are basically two words being brought together as one word, how can you do it? Well, you could write them as two words. You could write them as one word with a hyphen. And you could write them as one unbroken word with no hyphen. Here are some examples that you've probably seen. Follow up, follow up, or follow up, right? So what do we do in this case? Again, check the dictionary to see which one is appropriate. And we're talking about the Webster's Collegiate Dictionary for, for uh, college students and writing research papers. This is the go-to dictionary. Follow up when a noun or adjective is used. Follow with the hyphen there. So this is hyphenated here. You can see that. If it's a noun or an adjective, follow up when it's a verb. You see the space there? So you're going to do something. Follow up. This is generally the rule of thumb to use. That if it's a verb, an action, then you need to separate them into two words. However, if it's a noun or adjective, you can put them together by using a hyphen. Two or more words that express a thought is a compound word, or what we call a temporary compound. Temporary meaning that's not really a word that goes together this way, but you're using it in your research for this special situation, this kind of special case. If a temporal compound, temporary compound, precedes what it modifies, then hyphenate it. If it follows what it modifies, then do not hyphenate it. It's easy to say, but let me see if we can think about that for a second when we have some examples. So if a temporary com compound word precedes what it modifies, you go ahead and hyphen it. And if it comes after, then you don't hyphenate it. And here is an example. We have trial by uh, trial by trial analysis. Boy, this stuff is confusing, isn't it? Trial by trial analysis. So I have a trial, then another trial. I'm trying, I'm trialing the trials, trial by trial. So in regular English, this should be kind of easy, trial and then a trial. But because it's a special situation in our research, we want to put these together. We're referring to one thing, this one thing we've done. Now, this one thing we've done has many parts, but it's still one thing. So we can say trial by, tr trial, by trial, and then it's an analysis, right? So if it's an analysis, then in this case, our temp temporary compound word comes before, and we can go ahead and hyphenate it. Now, Another thing we can do is use an M dash. Now, an M dash is not a hyphen. And you can see here, it's, it's a little bit different, right? You can see that it's a little bit longer. You see that? Now, we talked about this a little bit in, in part one, I think. But in any case, you can see here that we've got an M dash at the beginning and an M dash at the end of a, of a non-restrictive kind of adjective clause. Studies are included. And then we have this little explanation here. Studies published and unpublished are included. An N dash, please pay attention here, E-M and E-N. N dash is longer and thinner than a hyphen and shorter than an M dash. Boy, it's getting confusing, isn't it? And here's an example. Use between words of equal weight in a compound adjective such as this. Chicago, lend in flight, meaning Chicago to lend in flight. And then we also have a minus sign, don't we? And a minus sign is the same length as an N dash, but it's a little bit thicker and slightly higher. Now, when we look at that, we say this is a little bit longer, that's a little bit shorter, this is a little bit thicker. Um, how do we really know that? How do we see that? Well, that's a problem. Because when we talk about the dash, the n dash, the m dash, and the hyphen, when we talk about these things, what we're really talking about is the final product that you see like in the newspaper, or that you see in the journal article, or that you see in a book. And that's called the typeset. Typeset. Like in typing. 
but it's not just typing, it goes to the official publisher and they have special type sets. They have special machines that typeset this stuff. On our regular computer, can we do this? Uh, yes, we can, but it's not just on the keyboard usually, because if we look at the keyboard, let me see if we can get a shot here. I'm looking down on my keyboard, right? So if I'm looking at my keyboard, where are these? Well, basically we just have the key that is next to the zero and next to the equal sign. And what do we have there? We have what looks like a hyphen and an underline, a lower line. It's not even really an underline, it's just a lower line. So how can we do this? Well, that's where the, the trouble comes in. We really can't do it by just typing. We can only do it by using the special fonts that are inside your program, like Microsoft Word or LibreOffice, or you can sometimes represent it in special ways. So very quickly here we can look at this example here where we have the hyphen n dash and m dash. Now these are going to be the ones we use most often. And you can see the hyphen is short and kind of a little bit fat, pudgy. The n dash is a little bit longer and the m dash is longest. Well, how do we do that when we're writing? Again, when you type on your typewriter or when you type on your computer keyboard, the one you're going to be typing is always going to be this hyphen one. You see? So, uh, what do we do? Well, we can use two hyphens together to make a dash, but then which dash is it? Is it the N dash or the M dash? Well, we're just going to use a rule of thumb and say, to save trouble, let's just say the hyphen is the hyphen on your keyboard and two hyphens together will equal a dash, but we're not going to specify which dash. It could be either dash. Once you get to the typesetting stage, you may be asked to be more specific and you may have to give input, but usually a dash is just treated as two hyphens, one dash. You can hyphenate a compound word that's preceding the term it modifies. For example, anxiety arousing condition or role playing technique or water deprived animals. Now these words are not going to be in the dictionary, are they? Because they're usually two separate words. We're putting them together because we're trying to modify the word that comes after them. So for example, condition, the experimental condition. What is the experimental condition? It is anxiety and arousing. So it's anxiety is raised, is aroused, but these are two ideas. But they're not really two ideas in our experiment. They are one thing we're doing. They are one method, one technique we're using, one treatment. So in that case, we can go ahead and use the hyphen in order to help the reader read more smoothly role-playing technique. What is the technique we're using in this study? The technique is role-playing. But those are two separate role words, role-playing. So we can hyphenate them together to emphasize, no, it's not really these two things, it's one thing together. A phrase used as an adjective when it precedes the term it modifies, such as trial by trial analysis, to be recalled items, all or none questionnaire. So again, same idea. We're trying to put them together as an adjective and it's describing the items or the analysis or the questionnaire. It just makes the reading easier to understand. You can also do this when you have an adjective and non, a noun compound precedes the term it modifies. For example, high anxiety group, middle class families, low frequency, right? So we're at low frequency words. So you can see the same idea. So this is very normal in your research, but you don't want to go crazy with it and be putting this uh, everywhere. Make sure that it really is just to help sometimes the flow of your reading. And I think in this case, we can say that it's especially helpful when we're talking about things like the methodology of your research, because that can at times get um, complicated with many of these words that are strung together.
You can hyphenate compound with a number as the first element when the compound precedes the term it modifies, such as two-way analysis. So this two-way, right? We're going to hyphenate this. Why? Because normally it'd be two words, two-way, but it actually means one thing and it's preceding the term it modifies, which is analysis, and it has a number in it. Six trial problem. Twelfth grade students, right? Who are the students? They are the students in the twelfth grade. But we don't want to really separate this out and make it unclear. We want to just put it together. This is one thing. Sixteen second interval. S here means second. 16 second interval. And also when you use fractions. So for example, two thirds majority. I want to stay with that right there. Now, could we write this as two thirds? No, we're going to write this out and we're going to learn why in the next unit of our class. But today, let's just focus on this idea of the hyphen here. So two thirds. This comes before what it's modifying, so it's basically one thing, a two-thirds majority. Do not hyphenate in these cases, such as a compound including an adverb ending in ly. So widely used text or relatively homogeneous sample. So in this case, if you were to use a hyphen, you'd be putting it in right here or right here or right here, randomly assigned participants. Now, if you have this ly here, then you do not use the hyphen, do not use a hyphen. And the reason for that is because this is actually modifying this word here. So it's assigned participants and they are randomly assigned participants. So a little bit of a special case. A compound including a comparative or superlative adjective, such as better written paper, less informed interviewers, higher scoring students. So it's similar, but here what we're doing is we're saying again, higher, and this has its own meaning. So yes, it is higher scoring this kind of one group, but this is modifying this idea. Less informed, better written paper. So you do not use a hyphen in this case because you're comparing things, comparative words. Higher order learning, for example. Okay, now let's move on to another special case. Ah, too many special cases. I know it really drives me crazy too, but there you are hyphen in the word meta-analysis. Now, why do I bring this one up? Because this is a special case that you will often see. So meta-analysis and quasi-experimental. In this case, probably the meta and the quasi, which means not real, this is like a kind of semi-experiment, not a true experiment with control groups, etc. And meta-analysis, meaning we have many analyses together, and we're analyzing them as a group together, collecting their data. This should fall under this case of the comparative because it's a meta-analysis. This is actually modifying this, and this is actually modifying this. But in this case, we do use the hyphen because it's, it's like I say, a special case. It's accepted, and we often use these words. So if you use the word meta, Analysis together, make sure you use the hyphen, and quasi-experiment, make sure you use the hyphen. Do not hyphenate chemicals such as sodium chloride solution, amino acid. You do not put a hyphen in there. If you have foreign phrases and adjectives or adverbs such as post hoc, posterior test, you do not hyphenate these. So again, check the dictionary that will help you a lot. Do not modify, uh, if the modif do not use the hyphen, do not hyphenate, do not use the hyphen if the modifier including a letter or a number, such as group B participants, type two 
errors, type one performance. So you might be tempted to put a hyphen in here, like right there, or right here, or right here, but you do not hyphenate these, and they're very commonly used. Common fractions used as nouns, such as one third of the participants. So this, you might be tempted to go ahead and put the hyphen in here, but you should avoid that. Don't do that. Okay, here's a list of some common words that look like they might be hyphenated, but actually they are not hyphenated. So words such as, um, let me see, here's a really common one we often think of, mini or multi. We often think multi and mini are part of a compound word, so we should hyphenate them. Non, this is one we often use in our research, non. So you do not hyphenate these. You go ahead and put them together with the other word and make a compound word, such as non-significant, uh, multi-phase. And we have many of them here. When you get a chance, you can look over them.